Coming up on Locked On Dodgers, what's that field situation look like now with the Gavin Lux injury? We take a look at some updates from around the spring and see which guys have been impressing on the mound. That's what's on tap, so make sure to keep it Locked On Dodgers. You are Locked On Dodgers, your daily Los Angeles Dodgers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yo, 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 Dodger fans, welcome to Locked On Dodgers. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, the number one local sports daily podcast network. Locked On, your team every day. This is a daily podcast covering the Los Angeles Dodgers, bringing you the smart fans' perspective on our boys in blue. You can find us wherever you find podcasts and on YouTube simply by searching for Locked On Dodgers, and we're available for you every weekday morning throughout the entire season, throughout the entire year. Um, so subscribe and never miss a day because you know we're not going to. If this is your first time listening or watching, I'm Vince Samperio, and there is sometimes a co-host with me, Jeff Snyder, although today it is just me. We're both lifelong Dodger fans that currently cover the team have been in the press box in the locker room, have been all over Dodger Stadium, have been all over Camelback Ranch uh, as fans as well. And we're here to bring you the Smart Fans Perspective on our Boys in Blue every weekday morning for about 30 minutes. And that's what we're going to do today. Nothing too much in the news department. We've had a lot more news in the last few days. Uh, you know, obviously, there's still the Gavin Lux fallout and figuring that out. And, and you know, one way that affects is how we're going to start in, in, in the outfield. Now, obviously, Gavin Lux being hurt affects the infield. But we Jeff talked about yesterday how, you know, Dave Roberts and Miguel Rojas will get a bulk of the time, majority of the time at short. And then Chris Taylor will fill in the rest of the time. Chris Taylor got his first action at shortstop in yesterday's spring game. Uh, did make a throwing. It wasn't ruled a throwing error. It was ruled an infield single. But uh, his first play didn't go that well at short. But he'll, he'll get back into it. He'll get used to it. I'm not really concerned about Chris Taylor's defense. But the other domino effect of how Gavin Lex's injury affects the team is the outfield because now that Chris Taylor will have to spend some time playing the infield, that uh, obviously opens up some time in the outfield. And with Gavin Lex no longer on the roster, that opens up a roster spot, which in theory would go to an infielder, but technically Chris Taylor will kind of fill that role and then the Dodgers theoretically open up a spot for another outfielder and now the outfielders that are fighting for spots that we already know of are jason hayward james outman trace thompson they were fighting for one spot maybe now two spots there's still some there uh from what it does look like it doesn't look like james outman is truly being considered for a, a definite spot or at least he's not you know, it's one of those where he would have to take someone's spot at this point. Uh, it seems all but a formality that Jason Hayward's going to make the roster. And then Dave Roberts talked about Trace Thompson playing center field and how he liked his length out there. So it seems like Trace Thompson's a, a more of a sure bet to make the roster. And with Outman, if he's not an everyday outfielder, then yeah, it would benefit him more to be in the minor leagues playing every single day. But regardless of, of of that, you know, just kind of what Dave Roberts had to say about per, David Peralta as well, who is in the mix, who's not in the mix to make the roster. He's making the roster, uh, but in the mix to play outfield. And Hayward, Peralta and Hayward both being left-handed hitters. Dave Roberts said the natural assumption is that they platoon with righties and then Chris Taylor and Trace Thompson would presumably be playing against lefties or at least more often against lefties uh you know you can't do a straight platoon because chris taylor will have to be playing some infield uh throughout the season so last year trace thompson had reverse splits where he was better against righties than lefties but that might be we we don't know for sure if that's something that's going to happen again or more of a fluke or whatever the case either way trace thompson should be better against lefties this year than he was last year Regardless, they'll still be able to put together last year or every year for the most part. You're going to face a lot more right-handers, probably three to four times more right-handers than you do left-handers. So 
you don't necessarily need someone that mashes lefties for like a, a huge part of your season. You just kind of need it, uh, you know, occasionally once a week or so. So whatever the case is, David Peralta will also play some center field this spring uh, to get ready for the World Baseball Classic. He was a finalist for the Gold Glove last year and left for right left field, I believe. Um, so I don't know how he'll fare in center. Jason Hayward also said to be adequate in center field. I think that was Dave Roberts' word. And then you got Trace Thompson and, and Chris Taylor, who probably handle center the best of, of anyone else. And then Outman, who seems to be on the outside looking in. He would also be able to handle center field pretty well. So all in all, you know, what it means for the Dodgers is that it's still a little bit unsettled and, and having, you know, having Chris Taylor for sure in the outfield is a lot more you know, settling because the, you know, he can play left, you know, he can play center and, you know, barring uh, another year like last year that he can hit the ball fairly well, or at least at a, you know, major league level above average major league level. Whereas you don't know that with Jason Hayward, you don't necessarily know that with Trace Thompson uh, because Hayward, good, then not so good, and really bad the last couple of years. Trace Thompson was in and out of the league for a long time before catching on with the Dodgers last year and having a pretty good year, uh, but also, you know, limited capacity. And, and I, it, he had a good year the last time with the Dodgers around, and then it never quite figured it out. So it's hard to count on them to be – more than anything, than just solid defensively, and you're hoping that they can be above average offensively. And that's kind of the other fallout from the Gavin Lux injury is that the Dodgers were already operating with the need for a lot of things to go right in order for this season to be, you know, as successful as it has been in the past. Maybe not 111, 106, 107 wins successful, but, you know, successful in the sense of winning the division, making the, or at least, you know, making the playoffs, which I still don't think is in jeopardy, but you need a lot of things to go right. And now you need even more to go right because Gavin Lux is out. So, you know, you need Miguel Rojas defensively will be fine. You're hoping that he can give you, uh, you know, at least league average offensively, you know, now you need Chris Taylor to kind of refine his swing and, and figure things out because he's going to be playing a, uh, definitely more or at least a bigger role because before if he wasn't hitting and some of the other guys were hitting, you know, Chris Taylor could find himself in that utility role where he's kind of just moving around, filling in. But now he almost definitely will be in the lineup every single day, whether at shortstop or whether in the outfield. Now you need Jason Hayward to work out. You need Chase Thompson to work out. You need, you know, David Peralta to work out. You need all these guys to work out more so than you did before. Uh, so that's just the fallout of it. Um, speaking on Hayward, he did hit a home run in the spring game yesterday, and it was off a left-handed pitcher off former Dodger Andrew Heaney. Heaney also gave up a home run to Mookie Betts. So, you know, good for Hayward to hit a home run off a lefty, although it was a, a pretty piped pitch for him. But either way, you can if you can hit mistakes, that's, that's you know, part of the battle when you're facing pitchers in general but also same-handed pitchers from the left more specifically from the left side so the Dodgers outfield is a little bit in flux right now in terms of who's going to play where and how often but it does look like Hayward and Peralta and Thompson and Taylor will handle the book of the starts in the outfield James Outman is probably going to start the year in AAA and you know and if anyone falters or if Outman really stands out, then we could see a change down the line or the Dodgers, you know, you can say the Dodgers need a trade at shortstop, but they also could need any trade just to get another bat in the lineup and then they can figure out the logistics of it. So that's it on the outfield situation. We'll talk about just basically what we've seen from the last few spring games and, what it means for the starting rotation, what it means for the bullpen, and then just a couple other news and notes from around spring. So that's what's on top. So make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. 
Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. Put down some bets on points and rebounds and assists and, you know, Look at what you look at what's out there and put some bets down and see what happens. And they also have exclusive bets like the two by three, which is two three pointers scored in the first three minutes. If you got some some sharp shooting teams, you might want to put that bet down. So go check out all the bets all they got. They got player pops, spread, money line, total, exclusive bets, everything there. Don't miss your chance for your no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, so let's talk a little bit about just what we've seen in the last couple of spring games. Dustin May pitched on uh, – Dustin May pitched uh, – I forget the day. I'm losing track of days. But Dustin May pitched uh, in the last spring game, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, Wednesday. And looked good. You know, came out throwing 98. He wasn't helped out too much by his defense in that first inning, but was able to you know limit the damage, get around it, and look pretty good. Uh, with Dustin May, you know, there's obviously results in the spring are a little bit different. We don't know exactly what Dustin May is working on, but velocity's there, the movement was there, and you know, with him, it's it's. With him, it's always been a matter of missing bats and can he miss bats at a at a higher rate in terms of, you know, just to match up with the stuff that he has. And it's still, you know, progressing there. But with the velocity there, that's a big step, especially with him, you know, coming off surgery and, and you know, factoring into the Dodgers rotation pretty heavily this year. Uh, it's good to see him ready to go. And it's and just knowing that we saw what we've seen in the last couple of days and what we saw with Noah Syndergaard. And then we talked about Julio and his velocity, you know, those guys are, we're sitting 92, 93 and you lose Walker Bueller. So you lose another guy that, you know, usually sits mid to high nineties. So to have Syndergaard, or I mean, to have Dustin May up there in the high nineties is, is just fun to watch in general and also good for the Dodgers rotation just to have, you know, they're, they're have more of a mixed bag, in the past, you know, you got hard throwing Dustin May, you got Cindergard, who we don't know exactly know yet, but uh, you know, has some some strong off speed pitches uh, in addition to hopefully some power stuff. You got Julio, who can command the three pitches and move stuff around. You know, you got Kershaw, who is mostly slider with an occasional curveball and then a well placed fastball here and there. And then you got Tony Gonsolin, who we're going to see on Friday for the first time this spring. Uh, with that split finger sinker, whatever you call it. So, yeah, the Dodge rotation throws a lot at you. Dustin May being the guy that's, you know, throwing hard and hopefully being able to miss bats uh, is the beneficiary. He struck out the side in the first inning, so that's a good sign uh, in terms of him, you know, being able to play off of contact a little bit with the guy that throws that hard. And with the Dodgers, we, we've talked about how limited hard contact is kind of their – their forte in terms of pitchers and and for the most part you know we don't really see them setting strikeout records or being up there in the leaders and strikeouts but we do see them usually being the leaders if not the leader in in reducing hard contact and in you know average exit velocity so decime being able to miss bats and being able to rack up those strikeouts is a little bit more beneficial just for his ability and his sake uh and, you know, figuring out this starting pitching thing, because as we've seen before, if you can't figure out starting pitching thing or you you can't, you know, you some of the best starting pitchers that we see out there, most of the time they can strike out guys or at least strike out guys when they need to. Julio being one of the exceptions, uh, and we've talked about Julio and kind of have his peripherals and, and you know, advanced stats and everything are, are – a mixed bag when it comes to him, but that's because he doesn't rack up the strikeouts very often, but he's just so good at limiting hard contact and, you know, getting guys to, to pop up or fly out or ground out, you know, he's good at that, uh, but not everyone can be like that. And when you throw as hard as Dustin may, you know, it's not very often you can, it's harder to limit hard contact when you throw that hard, unless you're constantly jamming guys um, just for this, you know, 
as we see with Bruce Grado, he limits hard contact well. He doesn't get a lot of swing and miss, uh, but guys aren't having comfortable at bats with him. And that's how Dustin May can be. But if he can throw some strikeouts on top of that, you know, then the Dodgers are, are in a better place overall in terms of their rotation. So that was, uh, you know, good to see from Dustin May. Like I said, we, we haven't seen Kershaw yet in the Cactus League game. Kershaw did throw to hitters for the first time the other day, uh, and everything seemed okay from there. Uh, I'm not sure if Cactus League game is the next step for him or or what they're going to do. Kershaw knows what he needs to do. The Dodgers know what Kershaw needs to do, uh, so we'll just have to continue and wait. Julio is expected to make one more start with the Dodgers before uh, preparing for the WB or before not really leaving. He'll still be in Arizona, but before leaving camp, uh, to play in the World Baseball Classic. So, oh, sorry. So we're going to see him one more time. Uh, we'll see Syndergaard again. We're seeing Gonsolin this Friday. Uh, hopefully we you know, we see Pepio again. We're going to see all these guys uh, again in the starting rotation. is pretty much locked, but, you know, there's always guys that can either find themselves well, doing well just for confidence sake, like Pepio, or guys that, you know, kind of, emerge a little bit and can say, okay, if we need a guy later on down the road, this is a guy that we can look to or, or count on Michael Grove being one of those guys. Grove's going to pitch, I believe today uh, in the second spring game. So we'll see how he looks. He's he's, we talked about him last week, how not really a candidate to make the opening day roster, but you know, he's already on the 40 man roster. So we're we'll definitely see him at some point this year, either in a spot start or if there's injuries or, or things of that nature. So, um, that's it on the starting rotation. We'll go into Miguel Vargas watch. Miguel Vargas was cleared to swing. Uh, he took some some hacks in the cage. Uh, he hopefully gets a swing in a spring game Friday or Saturday. I believe that's what they said. But Miguel Vargas has walked three times uh, so far with teams knowing that he can't swing the batter. At least I I'm assuming they know they have Twitter. It's it hasn't been, you know, it's not something that I'll just hit from people. It's uh, out there on Twitter. I would assume the teams know that. I don't know if, you know, the teams might know that. I don't know if they necessarily tell their pitchers that. And, you know, maybe they want to see what their pitcher can do. Uh, but it is pretty funny. You know, he's walked three times and has yet to swing the bat uh, throughout the entire spring. So the very least we know that he'll be able to, uh, have a good eye uh, if, if he needs to during the season. If he gets in a slump, we know he can have a good eye. So that's uh, the update on his front. Other than that, like I said, Mookie Betts homered yesterday, Jason Hayward homered. Uh, there was some rain in the mix over there in Surprise, I believe, where they were playing the Rangers. Uh, the game ended a little bit early. A couple guys dealt with the mound not being that great. Uh, one of those guys being Jimmy Nelson, who we'll talk about in the next segment. And, yeah, that, that's that's it from the offensive side of the spring. Uh, we'll, we'll get into kind of the relievers and, and one uh, encouraging uh, thing we saw in the Dodgers front, not necessarily for this year, but just in general encouraging. So thanks for making Locked On Dodgers your first listen of the day every day. And make sure to keep it locked on Dodgers. All right, let's finish up with some news and notes around the bullpen. What we've seen the last few days, uh, like I mentioned right now, with the rain yesterday, it was a little bit muddy. The The mound got messed up. We saw one of the pitchers, Leon, from the Rangers struggle, walked a few guys, uh, couldn't quite find himself, figured it out on the mound. Uh, we saw the same thing from Jimmy Nelson. We saw Jimmy Nelson for the first time this spring. Now, results-wise, not great. He gave up a single, which was an infield single, was very close to being an out. He gave up two walks, uh, only topped out at 90 miles an hour before he came out of the game. After the game, Dave Roberts said he wasn't concerned about Jimmy Nelson. He said he thought the rainy weather and wet mound conditions kept him from getting comfortable. He said that Nelson's velocity has been better in camp, so he's been higher than 90 miles per hour in camp. And I was actually surprised they sent him out there because it, it it hadn't rained, and then it started raining really hard in that inning right before Jimmy Nelson went out there. And we saw the Rangers pitcher, Leon. I, I, yeah, he was struggling with the mound and how to keep, uh, you know, putting his spikes on the little strip they have back there and then how to get the tool out there to, to remove the mud from his spikes. 
I didn't think they were going to put Jimmy Nelson out there in the rain, especially knowing what we know about Jimmy Nelson in terms of having injury history and just in general, like, obviously you have a plan for spring and you need guys to get their, their innings in and, and, you know, see what they look like, but it didn't seem like a conducive condition to put someone, especially a guy like Jimmy Nelson out there where you one need to evaluate him to see what he can do for you. And two, a guy that has an injury history and you're putting him out there in subpar conditions, but regardless of it, he escaped healthy from what we know. It, like I said, results weren't that great, but, I'll, I'll concede to, to Dave Roberts' point and I'll give it up. You know, that was not the right way to see what Jimmy Nelson can do. I would imagine, yeah, he can't throw harder than 90 uh, considering he's all healthy. And I would imagine he'd be able to throw more strikes than he did yesterday. But those conditions, you know, left a lot to be desired. So one guy that did look good yesterday was Caleb Ferguson. Caleb Ferguson was touching 96, 97 on the gun in surprise, according to Jack Harris from the LA Times, uh, which is faster than his velocity last year. And Dave Roberts mentioned that Ferguson looks as good as he's seen him, has more life on his pitches, came into camp in better shape, and had a lot of praise for him. This is on top of when we talked about last week, we were Mark Pryor talking about the closer, the closer role and mentioned Caleb Ferguson as one of the names uh, when talking about a potential closer. And we thought, okay, maybe he just saw Caleb Ferguson throw that day or had him top of mind or whatever the case. But that's now some sort of praise from him. Not, no, not guaranteed praise, but his name was in the mix. And then now praise from Dave Roberts. Ferguson, the guy that, at least I had kind of written off. Maybe, I don't know, Jeff had fully written him off in terms of not going to be on the opening day roster. But it does seem that he will find will find himself on the opening day roster now. And, you know, it, it's going to depend on what the Dodgers do in terms of, like, a, a more long-form reliever. Like, you know, are they going to have a for sure kind of swing guy or are they going to, you know, focus on the bullpen and and designate someone as a multi-inning guy? Uh, that's kind of where we're going to find out if Caleb Ferguson is going to be on the roster. But, you know, you go through and you look at a 26-man roster, uh, believe it's capped at 12 pitchers. So you got Almonte, you got Gonsolin, you got Gratterall, you got, well, Daniel Hudson, if healthy, you got Kershaw, you got May, you got Shelby Miller, you got Jimmy Nelson, you got Evan Phillips, you got Noah Syndergaard, you got Julio, and you got Vestia. That's 12 right there. Now, uh, you know, based on what we've seen, Jimmy Nelson signed a major league deal, but, uh, you know, they could maybe start him on the I.L. if he's not ready to go, if he doesn't get the innings up. Shelby Miller had a struggle in his first appearance but he also signed a major league deal so i don't believe i don't believe any of those guys have options so it's not one of those where they can option them down um daniel hudson has yet to throw in a, in a cactus league game yet so you know maybe he's one of those that starts the season out in the mine or not in the minors but on the injured list so there's there's a way for ferguson to get on the opening day roster and you know, I, like I said, it, it's just a matter of all those names. Names with that was five starting pitchers and seven relievers. Do they go with you know a guy like Michael Grove or Andre Jackson that can throw multiple innings here and there? I don't know. Uh, you know, Gratterall has been the guy that's thrown multiple innings before. I don't know if that's what they're building them up to. So whatever. But you know, if Ferguson's hitting 96, 97, has more life on his pitches, is looking like the Caleb Ferguson that the Dodgers had in twenty twenty before he got hurt. That's definitely a guy you want one on your in your bullpen and two, you know, it does add another lefty in the mix. They don't have they have Alex Vesia, but that's really the only lefty they have in terms of bullpen. And it's not as prominent or not as big a deal as it was in the past because of the three, you know, the three hitter rule. You can't bring in a guy just to face a lefty. But when we saw Ferguson, he was getting guys out from both sides. Uh, and if he's back to that, then, yeah, that's definitely someone you want on your roster. So we'll continue to monitor. And obviously, you know, injuries might sort it out. Uh, but the Dodgers, it's a good thing to have too many strong arms for your bullpen. So a uh, couple notes on guys that are dealing with injury. Victor Gonzalez uh, left elbow inflammation. 
but he's impressed early on in camp. He's been fine. Uh, he hasn't pitched in a Cactus League game, but he could. That's another guy that could throw his name into the mix. Realistically, he's pretty f- pretty far back in terms of making the roster, but he can be that first guy up if they need somebody. Daniel Hudson, who had the, the ankle tendonitis, he's been throwing bullpen sessions, feeling healthy, but you know, not sure when he's going to get into a Cactus League game and if he's going to be ready for opening day. Alex Reyes has been throwing, you know, we don't expect him until June, July. That, that's what he said, uh, but he's been throwing and, you know, or hasn't been throwing off a mound uh, and won't throw off a mound until later this month, but if he can get back. And then you got Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller posted on his social media yesterday that he threw for the first time his first throw day. Now, this doesn't mean much in terms of are we going to see Walker Bueller this year, but it's just a good sign seeing that he has recovered to the point where he can throw and start that throwing program. And, you know, he's going to go full bore, full at it, and he wants to pitch again this season. That's not entirely up to him. You know, his work ethic, if it was just based on the work ethic, then, yeah, I believe we're going to see Walker Bueller again, and I have no doubt about that. But it's not always about that, especially this being his second Tommy John. It's just going to, you know, depend on his body and how he reacts once he starts throwing and, you know, how his body recovers and everything else. So, but seeing him throw is just a welcome sign. And, you know, even after, even with Tommy John surgeries as common as they are now, and realistically, you know, for the most part, everyone comes back from Tommy John surgery at, at this point, at least if they get it, you know, from a from a real doc like a major league aided doctor uh but still get to see that first step of him throwing out of the way so yeah that that's it from the last couple of days in spring and and just kind of what we're looking at now the dodgers will continue to play these spring games and we'll continue to to monitor and see what what they look like and we'll continue to be here every weekday morning for you talking about it so that's going to do it for today's episode thank you all for listening thank you for making locked on dodgers your first listen of the day every day check out locked on fantasy baseball win your league by listening to matt and dom every day as they bring you the best fantasy draft strategies find locked on fantasy baseball wherever you get podcasts and on youtube part of the lockdown podcast network your team every day you can find us wherever you find podcasts and on youtube if you search for locked on dodgers you can also find us on twitter and instagram that way search for locked on dodgers you can find Jeff on Twitter at Snydog. I'm at Vince Samperio. The DMs are open on all those accounts. If you need to get a hold of us, ask a question, drop a comment, uh, or if you have a concern, you can also leave comments on YouTube if uh, you know Jeff likes reading those comments. So go ahead and comment on YouTube. You can get a hold of us other ways via email, lockdowndodgers at gmail.com, or via voicemail text at 323-863-5625. We're here every weekday morning, and we hope you'll be with us when you get in your car or if you're at home. Tell your smart device play podcast, Locked on Dodgers. And remember, you don't have to agree. You just have to listen. Have a good one.